Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, then welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So if you guys are looking for the best and most honest how to's and reviews from a consumer's perspective, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave any comments that you have for me down below. We are gonna be doing a first impression and wear test on the new Hourglass Soft Glow Foundation. This is an expensive foundation. I'm not even gonna lie. It's very expensive the shade matching was very very odd i'll get into all of that in this video but if you guys are interested in seeing my first impressions and then following it up with a full day wear test then just keep on watching this foundation retails for 58 dollars that is an expensive price tag for a foundation for me uh, it comes in 32 shades you can purchase it at sephora online in stores hourglasses website as well as Ulta, I believe, online. This claims to be a weightless liquid foundation that gives 16 hours of medium buildable coverage with a natural soft glow finish. It's supposed to be inspired by the ambient lighting collection and it's infused with blurring spheres that provide a light diffusing effect, minimizing the look of imperfections for skin that looks smooth, even, and glowing in any light. It's supposed to be easily blendable and delivers a second skin finish for a complexion that looks Look seamless and lit from within. It is also transfer resistant. It's supposed to resist humidity and sweat blue light protection which i am always skeptical about i have the shade number eight and let's get into the entire shade matching experience i was originally going to purchase this foundation online however i decided that i was going to wait until it was in sephora stores because i could not decide between the shade 10.5 and 11. they actually didn't have a display yet for this at my sephora so they actually had them in the back and they were bringing out shades and helping shade match me which was so helpful so like kind of them to do i am always without fail in the medium neutral maybe neutral peach undertone type of shades that was categorized at 10.5 and 11. those were the shades that i was like i'm definitely one of these but they were so much darker than they looked online versus on my skin and i wanted it to match my neck now granted my arms my legs and stuff are much darker than like my face and my neck but i wanted it to seamlessly blend on my neck at least we tried 11 10.5 9.5 9 and then we got all the way down to 8. i was very confused because 8 is actually described as a light medium with neutral undertones i am very rarely if at all in the light medium category if i am it's during like the dead of winter but this actually matches me right now as someone that has still a little bit of her summer tan so i would say if you're going to buy this foundation go in stores and swatch it because this was two and a half or three shades lighter than i thought i was gonna be i will leave my foundation shade matches at the bottom in the description for you guys so you can kind of see where i sit and what i use for other like brands and stuff and someone was actually getting matched for the same foundation right next to me and they were also having a really really hard time leaving that for you guys to do with as you will let's get into swatching it on the face with all of my foundation videos i like to use a brush on one side a sponge on the other um, and i will probably like powder and all of that just depending on how this is sitting on the skin i am going to be helping my parents they just uh closed on their new house so we're going to be doing a lot of like housekeeping stuff like putting up curtain rods ceiling fans cleaning rugs all of that stuff so it's gonna be a busy day so it's a great day to test out a long wearing foundation they also launched a new brush to go with this foundation i did not purchase that i have my own brushes that i'd like to use today i think i'll be using this bk beauty 101 brush for the brush side and then i'm just going to use a real techniques sponge for the sponge side so I wanna go ahead and prep the skin. I have this Tatcha Dewey cream sample that I got from Sephora, and I'm gonna use this to use it kind of as a primer. I don't really want to use a primer underneath this, so I don't wanna use any sort of primer just yet, whether it be glowy or pore filling or anything like that. So I'm gonna start on the brush side, and I'm gonna put just a little bit we're gonna start small and then build up if we need to. I'm gonna use this Merit one actually instead. It's similar in shape to the Hourglass one. I don't know if the density is the same, but just gonna use this instead. And I'm gonna go ahead and pat it and just blend it into the skin. Yeah, that's a really good match. 
So definitely if you're more on the medium side of things, go lighter than you anticipate. Definitely get shade matched. Avoiding the under eye area because I want to make sure that the concealer can just sit on the skin versus on top of the foundation and the skin. Here's one side with probably half of the suggested amount of foundation for the entire face. I would say right now this is about a light to medium coverage. I wouldn't say it's a full on medium coverage because I can still see my spots here. I do still have some redness under my nose and around my nose and you can still see a good amount of freckling here. It didn't completely mattify my skin so it is like a more natural finish but I would say if I had to pick if it was a glowy foundation versus a matte foundation I would say that this is more of a matte foundation, but it's not drying out my skin by any means. Now going in on this side with my sponge, and I am going to go in with just a touch more than I did on the brush side because sponges tend to soak up a little bit of product. So I'm going to make sure that I compensate for that. And then we are just going to buff that in. It is quite light for my forehead, but my forehead tends to be a lot darker than the rest of my face, but that's nothing bronzer can't fix. And here is the sponge side. It did give me a little bit more coverage, and it could be because I did a little bit more foundation to you know, compensate for the sponge soaking up some product, but I don't think my sponge soaked up too, too much product. But I can definitely see that it's covering my freckling right here a little bit more. It's definitely covering the redness under my nose more. I still see it a little bit. It looks more blurred on this side for sure. Like around my nose right here, it's looking more blurred than it is on this side, with the brush side. That's where I see the main differences is on my cheeks. What I'm gonna do now is add a little bit more to the brush side to see if I can get it to the same spot that the sponge side is at in terms of coverage. All right, so that's definitely better. It's closer to the sponge side, but I will say that I do prefer the way that it looks applied with a sponge, but it's looking pretty even now. I'm just using my sponge to kind of go over and make sure everything is blended, especially around my forehead since it's a lot lighter than my actual forehead. Alrighty, so this is what the complexion is looking like with the foundation on. And I'll give you guys another close up of the skin so you can see it freshly applied on both sides. It didn't completely suck my skin dry of any moisture. It still looks pretty nice. I think that I might still need to powder it. I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna go put on a quick face of makeup. I'm not gonna do anything too glam because I am gonna be moving around a lot today. So I'm gonna go do that really quick, do all my liquids and creams first and then I'll come back on camera before powdering to kind of show you guys what the face is looking like with all of those on there first. I'm back and here is the skin with all of my liquids and creams on. I did use, where is it? The Say blush in the shade Rosy and I used my makeup by Mario um, Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in the shade Medium. This is like that cream one. I'm obsessed with both of these. They are amazing. Let me show you guys a little bit of a close up of the skin, what it's looking like with everything sitting on it. I also used the Dior concealer. I think it's the Backstage, yeah. The Backstage concealer in the shade 3N and I apply that underneath the eyes a little bit on anywhere that I have like redness. I still have a good amount of shine on this skin. Nothing that's like extreme grease ball looking or anything like that. It definitely does look a little bit more mattified right here where I didn't put any additional product um, right here. My forehead is looking pretty good as well. I really would say that I'm just looking shiny in the T-zone, so I'm definitely going to set the entire face, but especially in the T-zone. And to do that, I'm gonna be using my Say Air Set Powder in Translucent Medium. This is definitely a very light powder. It's not gonna give you super mattifying effects or anything like that. It can lean towards more of a natural matte finish, so I wanna make sure that I don't completely like get rid of all of that natural glow. I bought these two new Morphe brushes. They are so fancy and cute. They kind of remind me of NARS brushes, you know, like those really short, like black brushes that had like a more fluffy top right here. I forget the name of it. Um, but yeah, these handles are extremely long, which is kind of like difficult to get used to. So in comparison, like here's my BK Beauty brush. Like that is <laughs> how long the handle is, kind of insane. But I'm gonna be using this powder setting brush. This was the blush brush that I use and it's really great to just like get in there. I'm gonna swirl it around and I'm gonna start on the T-zone and just kind of like tap my powder in there. 
I'm also gonna run it right under the eyes so I get minimal creasing throughout the day. There's the powder just on the T-zone. Honestly, it's looking really nice. I'm very surprised, not surprised, I'm more surprised that it's still giving me a very natural face look. Now, if you are more of a dry skin type, I'm not sure how much natural glow you are gonna get out of this. You may be able to skip the powder altogether. I'm gonna go in with just a little bit more powder on the rest of my face just for extra insurance. There's that, and I think I wanna go in with some powder bronzer and blush as well. So I'm gonna be using this Bare Minerals Blonzer in Kiss of Copper. And then I have my MAC Give Me Sun here. Just gonna do a touch of powder just to set those colors, and then I'll be back. And here is the finished face, completely powdered. Everything is set. I did use my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray here. I just did two spritz on the face on either side. I am kind of digging this finish. My pores do look pretty flawless. I mean, everything is looking very nice. Nothing is clinging. I'm not having any dry spots anywhere. This is good. This is good. Am I blown away? No, not yet. We'll see how it wears throughout the day. I forgot my lip. Hold on. Jaclyn Hill Maple Drip oil i'm just gonna put this juvia's place sweet nothing i love this lip oil we'll see how it wears throughout the day and hopefully it holds up through all of this stuff i'm gonna be doing i'll also give you guys a little bit of a natural daylight uh shot so you can see what this looks like in natural light so 10 45 in the morning i will check in with you guys later probably on my phone to show you guys how this is wearing and yeah no, no, no. Right next to a window. All right, I'm cleaning all these carpets now for my parents. I'm sweating. So let's look at the face. So I'm right by their giant uh, sliding door. And this is what we're looking at. I do have some creasing under the eyes, but that is definitely the concealer, not the foundation. I do have a little bit of shine here. I think that's a mixture of sweat and oil, but the forehead looks pretty good. Let me turn down my brightness. There you go. It's looking good. It's looking good. Some spotting right here where my bronzer is. But other than that, it looks pretty decent. All right, guys, it's 4.30. I'm still here helping, um, but I wanted to check in. This is what the skin is looking like. Definitely have some oils in the T-zone, but it honestly looks really nice. I have no issues with it. Like I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Oh wow, that actually looks really good. It still looks like I freshly put this foundation on even though it's been about six hours. Like even right here where these pores are, they look really nice. Like you can see the oils, but nothing is breaking apart and they're also not being accentuated. Oh, that's even better lighting right here. This is kind of like what it's looking like in person. The concealer is still smudging down there or creasing down there rather, but everything else looks really nice. I wanna show you guys in the mirror too, kind of what's going on. Let me see if I can zoom in. That is the skin. I am back with my final check-in. It is 10.46 p.m., so officially 12 hours of wear for this foundation, and I have a lot of thoughts. As you saw in my check-ins, I was at my parents' house with my husband, and we were helping them get their house set up, cleaning carpets. Um, I was helping my mom out, and I was outside not not a ton to be honest we ate dinner outside so that was around like nine o'clock at night i checked the temperature and it was about like 81 degrees outside when we were out there pretty humid as well for 12 hours of wear guys i'm really impressed i'm most impressed with the fact that my oils didn't completely shine through i definitely have produced oils throughout the day however they're not massively 
like taking over my face. I don't feel like a grease ball. I don't look like one either. And another thing that's really impressing me is my blush stayed on. I didn't have a lot of fading. And to me, that kind of means that the finish of this foundation really helped the blush cling on. You can see a little bit of my bronzer there, but I did have a little bit of patching. I don't feel like I need to blot, to be honest. Like, yes, I do have some oils that are happening here, but it's nothing that it's distracting. The only places that I'm seeing fading really is right around the nose where I have that redness. I'm not seeing on my white top any sort. Oh, there you go. Actually, I do have a little bit of transfer right here. Don't know when that happened, but a little bit of transfer. It could be because I am more of an oily skin type if you're more of a dry skin type maybe your your face would kind of like hold on to the product better than mine did i can live with it you know what i mean overall i think that this foundation has been amazing it feels really nice because you don't actually feel it i feel like it's really kind of kept my oils at bay, which is really all I can ask for. It's been a long time since I've come across a foundation that looks this fresh faced with 12 hours of wear. I was really hoping that it was gonna do well since it is such an expensive foundation. Now, would I recommend it? If you do have the $60 to spare and you're intrigued by this foundation, I can give it my stamp of approval and I will say that it is a very good foundation. If you're looking for a foundation for everyday wear and you don't wanna spend that much money, I'm sure you could find a foundation that gives you a very similar effect on the skin. I don't think it's a necessity. I don't wanna say go save up $60 just to buy this foundation. But yeah, I mean, I think that it's really good. I'm definitely gonna keep on using it. I sure as hell better keep on using it for that much money. Let me know in the comments down below if this foundation is one that you're going to pick up or if it's something that you have and you have thoughts on it. I would love to know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful or both, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.